Hello, everyone, and welcome to NCEFT's live series where you get to learn about and explore the world of NCEFT. My name is Anna Lee. I'm an adaptive writing instructor here. And today we have a quiz show planned, a horse-related interactive quiz show. Um, we'll go and we'll see Dash as our horse of the day. Um, but first, I also want to say we've got Chris behind the camera and Alondra is moderating our discussion and our quiz answering today. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll go over to the barn and say hi to Dash and our quiz show contestants. I want to say hi to Dash, and this is Skylar and Matt. Um, so I'm so excited that we get to do this quiz show today, because um, I think it's going to be a fun opportunity for us all to share some horse knowledge and maybe learn from each other and show off what we know about horses. Um, so we've got two contestants live here on the premises. That's Matt and Sky, and they are both horse handlers here too. Probably a lot of you have probably seen them in the arena and maybe even on some of the live series episodes before. Um, and they are in charge of taking care of our horses and making sure that they're healthy and happy and ready to do their job. So I'm really excited that they're going to share some of their expertise through this quiz show. But they're not just competing against each other, they're also going to be competing against all of you. So everyone out there in the audience, you too get to be a contestant on our show. And the way that you get to do that is through interacting through our Zoom interface. There are two types of questions. One will be a chat question. So some of them I'll ask you, well, so actually I'll, I'll back up and I'll say I have a bunch of categories of questions here. Each question or each category has three questions. So one for Matt and one for Skylar and one for you all. And because Matt and Skylar are here in person, they'll just say their answers out loud. But because you are at home looking through the Zoom, um, you'll get to answer through the chat or through the um, online poll in the future. So if it's a chat question, I'll let you know and get ready and answer through the chat. And if anybody in the audience gets the answer right, the audience will get a point. And if it's a polling question, if it's a multiple choice, you'll see the question appear in front of you. And I'll invite you to answer the one you think is the best. And then the way we'll score that is whoever, what everybody says, um, whatever most people say is right, then you get a point. Sound good? Are we yes. ready to go? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so our first, our first category is grooming. And the first question is for the audience. It's a chat question. So get ready with your computer to type in the answer to this. Question is, what is this tool? So what is, what is the name of it? And what is it for? Let you see the 360 degree view of it. Let's see whether we're getting any answers. Does anyone know what it's called? Oh, did you hear that? Tate said hi. He says hi back. And maybe I can also demonstrate how it's used oh. while we're waiting, if that gives a hint. Oh, I did, we did get an answer. Ah, what was it? Brush. Yes, this is a brush. Some people will call it a dandy brush. Did anybody say what it's for? Okay, we're going to brush. <laughs> brush, yeah, for brushing and for keeping our horses clean. So we want to keep all the dirt and dust that they get out in the fields. We want to keep that off of them, especially if we're going to put tack on. We want them to be comfortable and not feel like they're dirty underneath. So, actually, one of you wants to give the audience a little roundup to a, a whole point. Perfect. Beautiful. Okay. Good job. This next question is for Skylar. Oh, boy. What is this? That's called a sweat scraper. And how do you use it? So let's say I've just, let's say it's a really hot day and I've just exercised Dash here and I gave him a bath. Um, and, he's, and he's wet from the hose water from his bath. Um, if you leave that water on the coat, it can actually trap in heat. So it's great to use this tool to scrape off the, the water from the hose. Nicely done, yeah. Skylar. That's a full point for you. We can let yes. Matt turn that over. Okay, Matt, it's your turn. What is this tool? I'll show it to the audience too. And how do you use it? Okay. 
This is a very important tool. This is the hoof pick, um, and it's what we use to clean out their hooves um, and make sure there's no rocks or anything in there that will hurt them uh, when they're exercising. Uh, so, I'll show you how to use it. Yeah. I'm not sure how to hold my rubber duck and. Um, <laughs> yeah, here, I'll just hold your mic. Uh, but you just, you want to make sure that uh, all the horses know how to pick up their foot, but you just uh, run your hand down their leg and ask them to pick up their foot. Um, and it has a little pokey side, uh, so you can use that to clean out the foot. And it has a brush that helps get rid of any extra dirt. Um, and once everything looks good, uh, you do the other three, and that's what it's for. Nicely done. I'd say that's easily a full point, too. Okay, we're tied up. So the next question, this one's for the audience again, and it's another chat question, so get ready to type it in. Um, what is this? The category is tack. So it's a piece of tack. What is this called? And maybe what is it used for? You can answer either of those questions. You'll get a point. Girth, I heard it. Yes, yes. good job, good audience. Job. This is called the girth. And what it's used for is holding the saddle on. So basically it attaches to the saddle around the horse's belly on either side, and it makes sure that the saddle stays in place while we're riding. Excellent work. That was a point for the audience. Okay, next question is for Skylar. What is this and what's it for? This is called a saddle pad, and you place it on the horse when you are tacking up for riding, tacking up meaning you're putting the riding equipment on. And this is what goes directly on the horse's back before you put on the saddle. And it makes the riding more comfortable for the horse. Right. And it's also easier to wash than your saddle. That's very true, yeah. yes. Wonderful, that's a point for Sky. Okay. One for you, Matt. What are these and how do you use them? Okay, these are reins. Um, so these would attach to the bridle. Um, okay. <laughs> so if Anna is, Anna's hand is the horse's, if Anna's <laughs> the horse, um, the reins will attach to the bridle, uh, which is the piece of tech that goes on the horse's head. Um, and the bit actually goes into the horse's mouth, and the reins connect to the bit. So that's one way that we're able to communicate with our horses um, and tell them things um, about what we want to do. Nicely done. That's a point for Matt. I'll take the reins back. It's all tied up. Oh my goodness, this is a close one. Okay, our next category is horse communication. So this is gonna be a multiple choice question for the audience, so get ready, it should be showing up pretty soon. The question is, what can you tell from a horse, uh, from watching a horse's ears? The answers are A, what they're listening to, B, if they're mad, C, if they're paying attention to you, or D, all of the above. So while you all take a minute to read through those answers and decide what you think is best, um, we're gonna take a break and answer, have Sky and Matt answer some of their questions and we'll come back to see your answers. So Skylar, here's a question for you about communication. How might a horse tell you he has a bellyache? That's a great question. Um, well, let's say he has a bellyache. He will, they will oftentimes use their head to point at their belly and maybe bite along here a good even if you don't catch them in the act of biting or nipping at their belly, you might see some odd like chew marks along here. That's a good indicator that they've been like nipping back there. They might be lying down for long periods of time. They might be sweating, kicking up at their belly is a good indicator. Like if this hind leg comes up here and swishes at the belly, that's a good indicator. Nice, yeah. That's always important to know how your horses are feeling so you can help take care of them. Yes. Yeah, so that's a point for Skylar. And there's a question for Matt. What does it mean when your horse licks or chews while you're working with her? Uh, that's usually a good sign. Um, Dash <laughs> is actually doing it right now. 
Um, but a lot of times it means that they are relaxed and comfortable. Um, yeah, it's it's usually a, a react a good reaction to something. It, it means that they're they're uh, accepting and comfortable of what's go with what's going on. Nice. And that's a point for Matt. Now let's see, do we have any answers for our, from our audience about what you can tell from a horse's ears? We do. We had what they are listening to and all of the above. Both of those are right because all of those are right. Horses uh -huh. ears can tell us so much about what's in their mind, so it's always good to keep an eye on what their where their ears are pointed and what they're looking at. Okay, awesome. We're still tied up. How about a question about horse vision? So this one is for the audience. It's another multiple choice. And the question is, which of the following is true about horse vision? A, horses can see almost 360 degrees around them. B, they can see some colors, but not as many as humans can see. C, they have very good night vision. Or D, all of the above. Oh, well, hmm, okay, that's fine too. We can ask what is a blind spot? So maybe somebody on there knows what is a blind spot. And actually, Chris, can you tell me what the possible answers are? A patch of white on a horse's face. A patch of white on a horse's face. A spot on the other side of a jump that you can't see. A spot on the other side of a jump that you can't see. An area outside of a horse's vision. Ah, or an area outside of the horse's vision. So I'll let you all think about what that might be. And in the meantime, maybe I'll ask Skylar a question. Given what we know about how horses can see, what are two ways that we can walk around behind a horse safely? Wonderful question. Um, one of the best ways to communicate with your horse is actually through body language and touch. So let's say I'm walking behind the horse. I'll do it on this side. There's more room. Um, I might run my hand along here just to let him know that I'm still here. And if I'm not comfortable being right behind him, I'll give him a good at least three feet of space, at least, just to make sure that I'm in the safety zone. Um, but always communicating with your horse, whether it's touch or even speaking to him or her, is a great way of letting him know where you are. Nice work, Sky. That's the point for Sky. I'm going to yes. see whether we have answers from our multiple choice question before we go to Matt's question. Anybody answer that one? What is a blind spot? Nice work, team. That is right. A blind spot is an area outside of a horse's vision. And that leads actually right into a question for Matt, which is where are those horses' blind spots? Gosh. Um, so uh, horses have really good vision, um, and they can see almost everything around them. Uh, so the, there are two main blind spots. And the first one is going to be almost right in front of them. So because their eyes are on the side of their head instead of on the front, they have trouble seeing directly in front of them. So maybe like right here, I'm sort of in Dash's blind spot. Um, but you can see almost everything from all the way, probably back to right behind him. Um, they're able to see everything to the side um, and things far out in front of them. Uh, but so essentially right right in front and right behind are the places that he can't see. Nicely done. That's a point for Matt. Oh my gosh, it's all tied up. Okay, I think we have time for maybe two more categories. So this next category is actually just a bunch of three pointers. So this is where each question is worth three point if you can name three things. So the first one for the audience is going to be, this is a chat question, so get ready for the chat name three foods that horses might like to eat. While you're doing that, we'll ask Skylar a question. Can you name three horse breeds that we have in our herd here? And maybe tell us who they are. Yes. Um, one is a Trocaner, which is Dash. Um, another is a Norwegian Fjord just down the aisle here. Say hi to Elf. <laughs> Hello. And then another is Lyric, our Welsh Cobb pony. To some of you, right? That's three points for Sky. Wow. Okay, Matt, your question. 
Can you name three types of saddle and maybe what you might use them for? Three types of saddles, okay. <laughs> um, so we have the, the Western saddle, um, which you would use uh, for riding, for rest, Western riding. Um, we use that a lot. It's the one that has the big horn in the middle. Um, we have an English saddle, which doesn't have a horn, um, and that's used also for riding, usually, um, or a lot of times for jumping. Um, and then we have a dressage saddle, uh, which is also an English saddle, um, but has a much deeper seat uh, and a little bit different shape, and that is used for dressage. So not jumping, but uh, working on the flat. Nice work. That's three points for Matt. Okay, let's see whether our audience is able to come up with three things that a horse might like to eat. You see three answers there, Chris? So far we have carrots and apples. Those are both good answers. We'll get two points. Is there one more thing that a carrot, that a carrot might like to eat? That a horse might like to eat? <laughs> Alfalfa. Alfalfa, that's an yeah, excellent that answer. That actually makes up most of the diets of most of our horses here. Okay, we're down to our very last question, which is our bonus round. So this is gonna be the tiebreaker. Oh my gosh, here we okay, go. So we'll start with the audience question, which is another multiple choice question. The question is, which of the following is not a good way to communicate with your horse? So A is texting, B is using your voice, C is using your rein, or D is patting or scratching your horse. So I'll give you some time to think about that and answer that. And while we do that, we'll ask Skylar a question. Can you please demonstrate two non-human language sounds that your horse can understand? So no words, the sounds. Sure thing. Can I give like a context? Yes, and please explain. Okay, it. okay, <laughs> great. So let's say I'm, um, I'm long lining a session that we do at NCFT and I want my horse to stop. I would do which is kind of a roll of the tongue, goes from high pitch to low pitch, back to high pitch, and the horse, our horses know that that is the, um, the command to stop. And then uh, let's say I am riding or lunging my horse and I would like him or her to pick up the trot, I might do which is two clucks of the tongue and that that tells the horse to pick up their trot, which is like the equivalent of a human jog or run. Awesome, that's the point for Skylar, and it's actually an excellent lead into our last question for Matt, which is, can you, using your own arms and legs, demonstrate for us the footfall patterns of a trot? So what are the feet of a horse doing <laughs> while they're trotting? <laughs> I think I can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's just a game. You can do it. <laughs> so, front leg, back leg. Uh, one, two, three, four. So, sort of in a diagonal pattern. So, my left front, or the horse's left front leg would come <laughs> forward, and the back right, and then the right. Right front, back left. Nice. I think you get two points for that because that was a pretty difficult <laughs> explanation. <laughs> so that was Matt's um, excellent explanation of the footfall patterns of the horse. That's why it feels like two beats as a horse is trotting because it's the two and then the two. The two, two. Okay, let's see. <laughs> let's see. Good what job. I, did. I wrote the question. So. <laughs> um, so let's see what our audience responded to. Which of the following is not a good way to communicate with your horse? Well, I think someone was goofing around, but they said using your voice. <laughs> hmm. Did anybody give any other answers? I think we should go with texting. Okay, <laughs> let's go with texting. That is good. Most horses don't have cell phones, so trying to text them is not a great way to get in touch with them. But all those other things that we mentioned, using your voice or using your brains or touching them, as Guy mentioned earlier, touching them is a really good way to communicate with them too. Okay, what is the final score? Oh, the audience gets one point for that. Mm, perfect. And the final score, Matt wins, just barely. But I hope that we all won Good a game. little bit by learning <laughs> some new things about horses in this, this fun quiz show episode of the NCFT Live series.
I just want to point out that um, next week we're going to do a couple more. So thank you so much for joining in today. Um, our next will be next Thursday, or next Tuesday, June 16th at 3.30 p.m. Um, and that'll be the barn staff will be introducing our new horse and showing you how we train a new horse for therapy purposes. Um, so we look forward to seeing you next week. Hope you can tune in for that. Bye.